So today's lesson is on the shipwrecks and salvage option in, in the HSC chemistry syllabus. And in the last series, we looked at what do we predict with deep sea corrosion and with the low temperatures and you know, low um, life, or the low temperatures and low oxygen content at the bottom of the ocean, should corrosion be very high or very low? Okay? And so now we're going to look at another branch of corrosion, which is bacterial corrosion. And this has played a big role in shipwrecks at the bottom of the ocean because, like we mentioned in the previous series, um, there's low temperature and low oxygen, so the corrosion should be practically none. But still we see corrosion, and so the reason may be because of bacterial corrosion. So that's what this series is focusing on. And so today's lesson will focus on bacterial corrosion of shipwrecks. So, like I mentioned, despite the fact that we have low temperatures and low oxygen content in the depth of the ocean, shipwrecks still accumulate a large amount of corrosion. If you've ever seen a shipwreck um, that's just been dragged out of the bottom of the ocean, it's very, very corroded um, if it's been under the water for a fairly long time. Now, bacteria plays a large role in the corrosion process at depth. Okay, so at the depths of the ocean, bacteria is probably one of the main reasons why we still have corrosion. And these particular bacteria are anaerobic bacteria. So they use an anaerobic metabolism. So if you were to talk about humans, so biology students should be aware of this already, but if you were to talk about humans, we would be called aerobic organisms because we breathe oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. Whereas we have other organisms on this planet that don't need oxygen, and so we call them anaerobic, okay? so not aerobic. And what they do is they absorb, well, they basically generate energy by reducing sulfate to sulfide. So by sulfate, I mean you know, your normal sulfate ion. And then it reduces it to sulfide. So it could be something like this. Um, so H2S is the typical one that comes out. Okay? So it's turning this into something like this. And this is the rotten egg smell, if you're wondering. Um, and it's not a very pleasant gas. Okay. Now we're just going to quickly cover anaerobic bacteria. Biology students, again, you should know this already, but let's just cover it for those who don't do biology. So anaerobic bacteria were probably one of the first organisms to live on this planet because we didn't have oxygen on this planet all the time. We had an anaerobic or an anoxic environment, so we didn't have any oxygen right at the start of the planet, but life still developed. Okay? And that's because of these anaerobic bacteria. And we date them essentially back to about 3.5 billion years. And considering the Earth is only about 4-ish billion years, um, you can see how early these developed in the sort of time span of the Earth. Now, as I mentioned, the Earth's atmosphere originally contained very little oxygen. So many metabolic pathways were developed because of evolution, right? So because we didn't have any oxygen, organisms had to basically figure out a way to generate energy. And so lots of different metabolic pathways were created. There's this one, the sulfate reduction one. Uh, there's other ones like uh, fermentation. Um, so there's plenty of different types of metabolic pathways out there. And they all kind of were brought about by the fact that the Earth's atmosphere had no oxygen at the start. So sulfur reduction and sulfate reduction as a whole was a major metabolic type pathway at this time. Okay, so it was a big, big process at the time. And so a more relevant um, application of these sulfate reducing bacteria is to clean soils. So we actually have seen some applications of using these sulfate reducing bacteria to clean soils that are contaminated with things like benzene or other organic compounds. So by organic compounds, I mean hydrocarbons. So benzene is a carcinogen. So you should have seen this in production of materials. Benzene's a carcinogenic uh, compound. And lots of other organic compounds are quite poisonous. So we can actually use these sulfate-reducing bacteria to, um, to clean those soils out. So the effects of bacterial corrosion. Okay, So bacterial corrosion forms reddish-brown growths. Um, you can see them on this picture here. And we call them rusticles. Um, and it's a portmanteau of um, rust and icicle. 
So they kind of look like they're rusty icicles. That's why it's a portmanteau. And they hang um, from steel structures like small stalactites. So stalactites being the things you see in the caves, like Janolan caves and things like that. And these rusticles essentially contain a mixture of oxides and hydroxides of iron. Okay. So that concludes today's lesson on sulfate uh, on anaerobic bacteria and bacterial corrosion. So we looked at basically what an anaerobic bacteria was and what its effect on shipwrecks is. And in the future, we're going to look at um, how they actually cause corrosion in the first place. So we'll move on to the question segment and we'll see if you can use the knowledge to answer these questions. So question one, write a balanced equation for the reduction half reaction of sulfate to hydrogen sulfide by bacteria. Okay, so even though we've not looked at any chemistry yet of this actual process, you can actually do this question without me actually having to tell you what it is because you've already gained the knowledge from previous topics and so all you have to do is just apply the same rules. Okay, so to start you off, we've got this, okay? This is from the question. It tells you that we've got sulfate turning into hydrogen sulfide, okay? So we just apply the same rules to this redox reaction as we would to any redox reaction. So you can see we balance oxygen first. There are four here, and to balance oxygen, we add water. So we'll add four waters, okay? That's done. Oxygen's balanced. But now we have eight hydrogens here, two hydrogens here, totaling 10 hydrogens, and no hydrogens on this side. So to balance hydrogen, we just add hydrogen ions. So there are 10 in total. So we'll add, oops, not like that, 10 E minus. Oh, H plus, sorry. Oops, got it wrong. H plus. So we've got 10 H plus on that side, and we've got 10 H's on this side, so we're balanced. Okay? Now all we do is balance for charge, and you can see that there's zero charge on this side, and eight plus charge on this side. 10 times one, and they've got negative two here. So 10 minus two is eight, so we've got to add eight E minus. Right? And then that's it. That's your reduction half reaction done. No problems. Okay? You could have done it alone if you just knew this was the starting point, and that's all you needed to do. And as I showed you, that's the same equation. And remember this because this will come up again, or at least remember how to know how to derive it because it will come up again in future lessons. So which of the following best describes the role of anaerobic bacteria in corrosion? Well, they produce sulfate, which is wrong because we said we told you that they absorb sulfate to produce energy. They produce H2S, which increases the pH around the wreck. Um, that's true, but they don't increase the pH, very subtle thing. They increase the acidity, which decreases the pH, so that's wrong. The metal provides food for the bacteria, and so is corroded as the bacteria grow. Not quite, they don't eat steel, they're not like, you know, Superman or something, they don't consume steel. Um, it happens to just degrade into the ocean as, as a process. So D, they reduce sulfate to sulfide during their respiration process to obtain energy. And yes, that's the correct answer. All they're doing is taking in sulfate and reducing it to sulfide to produce energy, and that has a byproduct of corroding the steel. Okay, so they don't eat the steel, they just kind of happens to corrode it just because it's around. Okay. So describe the main source of sulfates at the ocean floor. So at the bottom, where are they even getting this sulfate from in the first place? And if we look back at our earlier lessons, we've studied geothermal vents, and that's where most of the sulfate comes from. The seawater enters into the sea floor through small cracks. And once inside the rock, it gets heated, 
by the Earth's mantle, allowing it to dissolve chemicals in the, in the rock. So the rock's here, the water seeps into it, heats up, starts dissolving some of the parts of the rock, and then those dissolved substances go into the water. And then obviously when it returns back to the, the well, when it leaves the rock and goes back into the ocean, it carries all these dissolved solids with it. And as a part of it, it's, and as part of those solids, you've got sulfate. And so other minerals taken from the rock, and as well as other minerals taken from the rock formation. So that's where they come from, just draining it out of the rock. Okay. Explain the role of sulfates on the ocean floor. Well, sulfate is used in bacterial cells as an energy source, similar to how oxygen is consumed by terrestrial organisms. So it's sort of analogous to how we absorb oxygen, they absorb sulfate. So it's a similar process. Now, sulfate is used inside the anaerobic bacterial cell in a process of respiration, some kind of form of respiration. And the reaction with H plus ions and electrons is part of the cellular respiratory process. So it reacts with H plus and other electrons, and that's just part of its process. And so the resulting H2S diffuses out of the bacterial cell. So what that means is when we respirate, when our cells respire and start absorbing oxygen and things like that, we obviously produce carbon dioxide. And that just leaches out of our cells slowly by diffusion. Similar thing here, this is like the carbon dioxide for sulfate organisms. And so it also leaves the cell as well, okay? Because otherwise it'll get poisoned by it. It's basically what sulfates do at the ocean floor. So um, we'll look into the chemistry a bit more in depth in future lessons. So why are sulfate reducing bacteria more populous at the bottom of the ocean compared to aerobic organisms? Well, the concentration of oxygen is low uh, at the bottom of the ocean because there's low diffusion of oxygen because it's so far away. And there's no light, so there's no photosynthesis. So the phot photosynthetic rates are low as well. So obviously, if there's no oxygen, organisms still need to produce energy, otherwise they die. So since sulfur is present at the bottom of the ocean, because we know there's lots of sulfur at the bottom of the ocean, it's more advantageous for organisms to consume sulfur at the bottom than oxygen. So it's better for them to consume sulfur, because there's lots of it, than try to consume oxygen, because there's very little of it. So therefore, the population of sulfur-consuming organisms will always be higher, because there's just more resource for them than the oxygen-consuming ones. Okay. So that concludes today's lesson on sort of anaerobic organisms and sulfate-reducing bacteria. So we looked at sort of an overview of what an anaerobic organism is and how sulfate can be used in their metabolic pathway. Um, in the next few lessons, we'll actually look at the chemistry of their, uh, of their sulfate-reducing process and how that interacts with steel to give you bacterial corrosion. So I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson. Thank you.